So it's Saturday, kind of been just chilling out here at the house today, doing some chores around here and just working on tackle, doing a few videos. And uh, in the background, I've had heavy hitters on and, uh, you know, it's always uh, a bummer when you're not out there competing, but at the same time, it's a motivator. It kind of keeps that fuel and that, that uh, drive going. So, you know, while I've got it on in the background, I'm still working on stuff, just got some new baits and tinkering with stuff. And, uh, you know, when there's a tournament around the corner, I'm always prepping and thinking of, uh, you know, what am I going to do at the Chowan River and so, some of the techniques. Uh, uh, I'm excited for it because it's going to be a shallow water uh, fishing deal. And, and so I'm just kind of tinkering with uh, top waters, flipping stuff, uh, bladed jigs, playing with new trailers. And, you know, I'm always watching what my competition's doing, trying to learn every little tidbit I can. So I'm always tinkering with stuff. So that's what I do. I, I rig up some stuff, come down to the pond and play with different stuff. So that's what we're going to do. And if we're lucky, we might get to catch a couple fish along the way. Okay. So y'all here I am out here. I'm just throwing some baits around. And I mean, you guys are seeing firsthand just kind of some of my tournament prep routines. I mean, just down here, like I said, playing with different colors and setups and Believe it or not, when I head to the Chowan River, I'm going to have a tackle box done up with the baits that I plan on tying on for practice. And uh, I think I've shared that with you before that I actually will take. And I don't really tie baits on before I get there just because, you know, when you travel for an 18 hour drive, you don't really want to have baits done on your baits tied on your rods. But uh, I'll have all that done up. I'll have a tackle box with the baits ready to go. But I'm just kind of tinkering with certain colors. And now's the time for me is i'm experimenting i have my favorite ways of fishing a bladed jig but you know i'm seeing different ways that guys are doing things and just playing with some trailers here to see if i like the action the look and you know now's the time to do that is to uh, see if i really even like something or not just because just because you know and that's one thing too just because my competition does it or likes it if it's not something that I can gain confidence in, especially over what I already do, I assure you there's no sense in doing it come tournament time or even practice time. Because if you don't have confidence in it, <laughs> you're wasting your time. I mean, it can be the best bait in the world, but if you don't have confidence in it, it's a, it's a waste of time. So... So, you know, for, for me, I, I come down here to the pond. It's not so much to catch fish. If I catch fish, that's a bonus. And the dogs like to come down and go for a swim. <laughs> so I know a frog's going to be a big deal at this next event. Uh, no secret there, but uh, I'm just playing with different rod setups, trying to figure out... Uh, you know, I obviously have my favorites, but it's a good time for me to come down and uh, play with what I think might be a different, better setup or something that uh, might give me a little advantage. So I'm just kind of playing with some some different rods here. I'm actually trying to frog on a 7.6 swim bait rod. And, and uh, you know, this rod gives me a little more backbone and, uh, you know, one of those type deals. So just out here playing with uh, some of the stuff. The other day I was out here playing with a frog and stopped i got a text message and reached down I, the frog had it paused out there and was looking at my text messages and uh frog was just sitting there dead sticking for like 10 or 15 seconds and this fish absolutely annihilated it so uh you know some of the things that you uh learn by accident a lot of times fishing uh... so this is part of my tournament prep just coming down here playing with different combos uh different baits, uh, you know, some of the stuff that may be old school that I haven't fished in a very long time that I think might be good for the Chowan River and James River, you know, stuff that uh, we haven't done in a very long time. And, and it's just kind of coming down here and, you know, remembering stuff that uh, it's been a while since we've done. So, uh, yeah, I think that's really important. I mean, I remember as a kid when I joined the bass clubs, uh, you know, we lived on a little lake and I would go read about new techniques and we might have a tournament at Palm de Terre or Lake of the Ozarks or Grand Lake. And I would just go and I would fish the techniques that I thought would be good for that upcoming event. And, uh, you know, when you go into an event with the confidence of certain techniques, especially stuff that you're not real familiar with it, it's one of the things that really uh, helps and pays off uh, 
when the money's on the line. So this is a new frog I got, I'm just tinkering with. I'm not gonna tell all the details about it, but uh, things a little bit heavier. And so far, just making a few casts with it, I can throw it a mile. It's a little bit bigger profile. So it might be one of those things that uh, might allow me to make some farther cast and being a little bit bigger profile might produce some bigger bites at times. So who knows? But that's the good thing when you're out playing around and I call this playing around, but these are the times to test certain things. You know, when I'm out there practicing for a tournament or actual competition, that is not the time to be playing with stuff. I mean, that's when, you know, especially when you're competing against the best guys in the world, you have to be on your A game and, you know, every single cast needs to be with something that is proven, you know, from from your setup to the bait to everything. So the time to play around is out here now. All, all my buddy, all my buddies would call this playing around. I call it working actually. My buddies will call and uh, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm working. And they're like, so you're playing with fishing lures. It's like, well, that's when you fish for a living. That's kind of the difference. So kind of a good looking frog. It's kind of amazing fishing in my little pond here because it it makes me realize there's very few days down here when you hit it just right. I mean, what I mean by that is when you come down here and you make a loop around the pond and you catch 10 fish on the bait you had tied on. And it makes me realize if I would take what I learned fishing my teeny tiny pond and remembering that out there on the trail, you know, it could translate into some really good information, but, uh, well, that was enough with the frog. So here I am, I'm down here testing baits for the Chowan River and uh, playing with little setups and throwing a little teeny tiny crankbait and I caught a fish on it. So that's always good, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of, pretty videos out there, stuff that looks fancy, but uh, you, you got to understand it has to be relevant information, stuff that's actually going to help you catch more fish. Uh, it just amazes me some of the information that's put out there and misleading people. And it's amazing with the proper editing and the fancy stuff that people can make something look really pretty or a particular bait or anything. And, and there's one thing I can tell you when it's me or, you know, even a lot of my competitors out there on the tournament trail, we are telling you stuff that, or you're seeing stuff. I mean, I, I get to watch live and, and, you know, you can't sugarcoat what's on, on live. I mean, these guys are sharing information that's legit. And this is stuff that, that they're using to beat the other best anglers in the world. So, uh, you know, I, I see a lot of stuff out there that uh, people catching fish on weird lures and, and crazy stuff. And I'm like, anybody can catch a fish on a bare hook in the right situation or a gummy worm or, or flying lure or whatever it might be. But me, I'd rather learn and use stuff that's actually relevant in the real world. And I assure you, if it's stuff that guys can use on some of the most heavily pressured lakes in the country against some of the best anglers in the world, if it works there, it'll work where uh, most people are fishing, especially, uh, you know, some of these better fisheries. So uh, remember where you're learning your information from. It's been a long time since I've caught fish on a square bill. You know, it's uh, the funny thing is a square bill is definitely one of my strengths. And uh, I can't really tell you the last time I've caught square bill fish, but that's just the nature of the beast with us and with what we do is you know, when we travel the country and we kind of have to fish the, the patterns and techniques that are potentially going to, you know, have the best potential to win. So uh, we just haven't had any good crankbait uh, tournaments lately. I'm not saying that's what the 
Chowan River will be, but I guarantee I'm going to have one tied on. And uh, it's been a while since I've rigged one up, and I really want to have a good uh, square bill tournament again. So, you know, part of my tournament prep is I'm down here kind of putting putting baits together that uh, that I may be throwing at the at the next event. Uh, you know, not so much to catch fish, but just feeling certain baits or combination of baits or trailers, you know, color combinations, what they see and, or what they look like and what they feel like. And, you know, if I can come down here and, and they feel good to me, then, then I'll use them some more. And, uh, you know, if I catch some fish on them, that's even a bonus, but, you know, obviously I'll be doing some more fishing between now and Cholon river, but at least I know if I head to a local fishery that, uh, something's passed the test here for me to actually use it out there where I'm trying to catch fish. And, and, and that's the thing that I always try to emphasize to people too is, you know, I've been fishing a lot of the lakes here locally that I haven't fished, maybe never fished or haven't fished in 20 or 30 years. But when I go to those lakes, I don't want to use that time to experiment with baits. I want to use that time to find fish and catch fish. So by me being dialed in here at the pond with the baits that I really like and stuff that I'm confident in, that's where it really makes a difference. So I think I like that trailer way better. So here, if it's crankbait, I can tune it, make sure it's running right and all that. If it if it's a you know, if it's a bladed jig trailer combination, it's something I can play with and see what I like, what I don't like. If it's a you know flipping bait, no no matter what it is. I can come here and kind of put it through the test. Oh, that was a bite. That was an encouraging sign. I've noticed a lot of my competition using bigger trailers on bladed jigs and it's just, I've tried it. I don't know if I like the feel of it or the action of it but that's like i said the only way to really do that is to play with it and find out what uh what works and the dogs like to come down here too because this is where they get to feel more like a farm dog so we got the farm chihuahua who likes to go for a swim and then penny she likes to come in here and bobby loves it when uh they come down here and then they get all wet and then you forget and they come into the house. So, um, and the dogs like to come down here and interfere and spook the fish that I would potentially have caught. Or at least if I don't catch one, I can blame it on the dogs. There's a lot of fish activity going on in the pond, so we haven't caught one yet, so uh, makes me want to catch one. Big journey. We trekked all the way over here to the other side of the pond. Penny, don't go down there. Penny! Oh, stupid dog. And we wonder why we don't catch more fish. Really? How about that, Mitzi? <laughs> okay. Maybe the Chihuahua is good uh, luck. You know, it's not a giant, but uh, it's just kind of a feel good. You know, it feels good to get that bite. Come down here and catch a fish or two. It's not always about catching fish, but when you catch one, it sure uh, helps the confidence. So, uh, that's the part I love about just coming down here and 
making a pass and finding out what works and what doesn't work and getting a bite or two as well. Mitzi was actually swimming. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's a better one. There we go. We got a few decent ones in here. It's a nice uh, two and a half pounder for a post spawn fish. And it just reminds me though, I've caught uh, two or three fish now and uh, that fish, what's kind of neat about this too is here I fished this little corner and it just reminds me though too, fishing a big body of water, sometimes just changing the angles because I had fished all this from over there, but I come over here and just throw it at a different angle and caught two fish. So just the little things that you learn that make such a big difference. So it's what I love about coming down here and fishing and catching a few and go in and mess with some more tackle. It's what I love about having my practice pond.